Hey guys, I'm Charles Neal, and I thought just for kicks and giggles, um, I'd show you how I make a pencil post for a pencil post bed. Now I know there's a lot of different videos on it, and everybody seems to have their own different way, and they all seem to work. This just happens to be mine. We have certainly made a ton of pencil post beds. It's a very popular form, and like I said, we've sure made a ton of them. I'm going to show you how we make the post. The object of the game is to create an octagon. Shaped post. Now, and basically it's a tapered post, and then we have to chamfer all the corners. Now, a lot of guys will just simply take a chamfer bit and just run up it once it's tapered, but that's not correct. The chamfer has to taper in width the same as the post. It has to follow the line. So it has to vary in width. Uh, now in my particular post that I do, typically I stop the transition point at right at 29, 30 inches. Now that's the taper. Now the actual transition is usually at 26 inches. I like it to go, because usually the mattress heights on them, uh, 28 to 31, something like that, it varies. Anyway, but, and typically, this is going to be a king size bed. So this post is two and three quarter inches, and square obviously. But, when you buy a stock, and particularly a tall post, very often, well I shouldn't say very often, but sometimes it's very difficult to get it that length and everything perfectly straight. But in order for your post to come out straight and nice, you got to take something into consideration. You have to go what we'll call a true center. What am I talking about? Let me show you. This two by four, we're just going to pretend it's a post. Well, if that post isn't perfectly straight, because the way I do mine, you have to drill a center hole, and that becomes our index. You'll see that in a second. So what I do, again, I have a hole drilled dead center in this one, because this post is straight. But again, not always the case. Here's what you do. Like I said, usually the bottom 30 inches is, I mean, now, you know, a lot of pencil posts, they'll taper the foot on it. That's purely a matter of choice. But to make sure you're going to get a straight post, if this thing's got a bow to it or something, and you mark the center and then you cut it, it's not going to be straight. She's going to. So here's what you do. Take your bottom 30 inches and measure the center. And mark it. In two two or three places. Then by laying a straight edge on it, line it up with your two marks. Then, whoops. This is going to give you, then you come up here and mark it. You do two sides. Then, when you mark it, and of course you'd be coming the other way 
We'll just do this for demo purposes. This becomes the center that's in alignment with the bottom of your post. Got that? Now, the other thing that the hole does is it gives you a place to put a finial if you want. But if you don't have a horizontal means of drilling it, that can be a little bit of a challenge. Here's what you do. And I didn't drill all the way through, but that's my fault. Anyway, just take a scrap off the end of your post. Cut it square and then drill it. Now the best way to do this is leave the post a little bit long when you mark it. That will show you where your true center is. Mark it, drill it, then it can just simply set over. You see where I just put a couple of pieces of wood on it? That's so I can set it over, clamp it in place, and use the hole that I've already drilled. That becomes a guide for me to drill the post and drill it straight. Now when I drill this hole, I'm going to drill it on the drill press and make sure it's straight. Again, that gives you a nice guide. Drill it, you're good to go. Okay, let's take a look at my jig. Basically this thing is a big taper jig. Nothing more than that. Now, you're going to notice right here, can we see that okay? I've got an index pin, and this is set up for two and three quarter. And back here in the back, I've got a just a butt hinge so it can open and close. Little handle to push. Rides over the fence, of course. And then you can see here I've got a slotted piece that I can adjust ever how I want. Then by simply putting this on the jig, Now one other thing I want to mention, it is, now make sure this is straight and I'm clamping it here because now again, I'm going to be exiting my cut at 29 inches. Another important thing is to use a good glue line rip saw blade. Something that's going to go through this heavy material pretty easily, okay? If you use a finer tooth blade, um, they have a tendency to burn a little bit more. You want something that's going to cut well and sharp. Now your first inclination is going to be to pull the jig back. Stop, don't. Stop the blade. And the reason for that is if you pull it back with that blade running, uh, I guess it could catch, but the other thing it does is it, and even with the blade, it tends to want to scratch. And subsequently, we just keep walking around. I'll get the other two sides cut because we got to do something different to cut the fourth side. Be right back. Okay, the problem that we have when we go to make our final cut is that we have nothing under here to support it. So simply take some double face tape and one of your all fall from your previous tapers. And you're going to have to slide down just a little bit to get yourself some support. Uh, 
You know the camera's on. There we go. And the, and the reason we're doing this is so that as we cut it, it doesn't want to bounce. Good enough. And in no time, you got a tapered jig, tapered post. But then comes the objective to put a chamfer on the other side. 